Okay, so there was an oversight in my review for the Arctic Lugit Freezer 3. By default, the AMD mounting option comes with the offset built in, and that's designated for AM5. So let's take a quick look at that and how it works in the M1 Evo. Welcome to Machines More. So apologies if you saw the initial review, one of the points that I brought up was that the AMD mounting was single position only, which is true. But I said that there wasn't an offset position available. That's an error. By default, the pump block is offset downwards of the IHS center line, so much that you can still see the IHS on AM5. But initially I tested on AM4 and not AM5 where that would make a thermal difference. So today I just wanted to follow up on that and show you why it matters. In addition, some of you have asked about fit in the M1 Evo, so I thought, why not? Let's just take a look at the cooler in this case. I'll show you how it works out in this case as well. So while an offset downwards doesn't swing things too much for AM4 thermals, it does benefit Ryzen 7000, which is on the AM5 socket. So if you look closely, the center line of the cold plate, it lines up lower than the center line of the heat spreader. If you flip it the other way, and that's the thing, uh, it's one position only. So if you flip it the other way, that goes, uh, so if you go right, left, it offsets in the wrong direction. You may not think, you know, it's a big deal because the heat spreader, it's still mostly covered, uh, but that's not true. <laughs> and it makes a world of a difference. As a quick example, quick test with the 7900X on PBO, CPU hit thermal throttle pretty much right away, and that really, really hurt the performance here, uh, resulting in a 34 second deficit compared to the correctly offset one. So it's about 19% slower if you flip it the wrong way. Uh, when I manually locked the clock speed to 5.4 gigahertz on all cores at 1.25 volts, uh, which is a little bit higher than you can get on this chip, uh, at stock PBO, it overheated and it crashed with the reverse offset. And on the other hand, it ran just fine uh, for the correct offset position. So this is actually a decent result here. Just a reference point, when I tested the PL240 flux as a side intake, it was about 84 degrees. So takeaway here, it does something. It would have been nice if we could test a centered position just to get an idea of what that gap would be because with some air coolers I tested, there's actually no difference between the centered and the offset position, but the you know wrong offset position is downright tragic. Uh, perhaps a more pertinent issue with Arctic single position offset now is that it can create some concerns for fitment, especially with mini IT exports. And this is going to affect both AM4 and AM5 equally because this pump block, it's already incompatible with quite a few mini IT exports you know, especially ones that have big M.2 or tall M.2 heat sinks, and that goes for both Intel and AM5. Uh, but when you introduce the offset position, that makes it even less forgiving in the sense that even if your board could have been compatible in a centered pump position, with the offset, you actually might lose a viable position. You won't be able to go elbows down, for example, because it's offset so much lower. So you're gonna have to rotate the unit so that the elbows come out the top of the pump block. So the exiting you know, towards the top of the board. It's a very strange way to manage the tubing, probably my least favorite way to do it in a, in a, in a build. Uh, because of this offset, and I didn't realize it at the time, I could only install it elbows up on my AM4 test board, and that's why. So. It would still be nice for Arctic to do a multi-position mount, and I think all it would take would be to do a modified mounting bar. So, you know, maybe in a future uh, revision, we'll get that. So uh, next topic, how does it work in the M1 Evo? So well, well, in short, it works, but you don't have much of a choice for positioning, okay? Uh, you don't wanna do side mount. Even the NR200, it was quite tight, even with the uh, new elbows here. In this case, there would only be about four millimeters between the top of the pump block and the rad, not to mention really inflexible tubing. So the side mount is a no-go. The good news is top exhaust, it mounts up fine with a mini ITX board here. And that's the beauty of this case because we just can lower the board to the perfect spot and you can you know also lower the power supply because you actually have to lower it quite a bit to clear the radiator uh since the power plug and actually hits the rad okay it's two millimeters too long uh, so when you have the tubes exiting the radiator on uh, this end of the case you don't have to lower this power supply as much because you have you know you, you don't have the tubes here that hit it but when you have the tubes exiting on the front of the case here you have to lower this power supply a little bit more and that's okay because you don't have anything under this power supply because unless your card is a single slot, 
you're not getting anything uh, underneath uh, the power supply or the uh, motherboard slot. So vertical GPU only pretty much. And I'll, I'll tell you with this three slot cart, it was very, very tight. The elbows and the tubing, they are still pushing up against the back plate here. I think with a two and a two half, two and a half slot card would be a lot better. In fact, it'd probably be a perfect fit. But uh, in this current state, I wouldn't say this is the ideal AIO for this case. I think units with more flexible tubing and a standard rad would still be a little bit more generous in terms of fit. Uh, the most suitable position is gonna be this way, I think, having the tubes come out the front end of the case. And you had to do a kind of a lo weird loop uh, with the tubing to get it to sit nicely and flush against the board. Kind of odd, it doesn't kink, so that's the, probably the way to do it, but you know, it's it's not pretty. But if you're willing to put up with those limitations and you have the components to do a setup like this, I think this cooler, it is quite incredible. And especially for the $77 price, it is a kind of a limited time thing that Arctic is doing right now. So do uh, definitely check it out if you're interested. So I hope you found this information helpful. So please give a like, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, links down below. Thanks for watching.